Hello my friends, this is a special video on randomness in Panzer Corps 2 because I got into an argument with somebody that they said that I was a noob for playing with lowered randomness and they seem to have a crazy uh, like a crazy concept or a crazy idea that if you have high randomness the predictions are wrong um, and they're not, the predictions are correct but we can test it. And so I made this video just because the way that I learn exploits in strategy games, the way I become good at strategy games is I test things. I take on board what people are saying and then I go away and I test them. And that's how you get good is you test stuff and then you find out what is true and what is not true. So let me show you how randomness works. And I personally despise randomness, but I'll show you how it works. And randomness can be a very big advantage for the attacker, which you almost always are the attacker in the uh, in the campaign. But anyway, so here's the Poland campaign, put it on Field Marshal and set the randomness to nothing. Okay, simple enough. So what will happen is, and it's very, it's very obvious, if I attack this cavalry with this tank, they will take four losses and I will take one. Right? Simple. Now, if I restart the uh, mission and do the same test again, and note that the game is seeded, so if you make the exact same moves, you'll get the exact same result. So what I'll do is I'll just move some move some stuff, then attack. Okay, so we got the exact same result. They took four, I took one. That's it. If you turn randomness off, you get the predictive results every time. Okay. So, back to main menu. New game, new campaign. So what happens if you crank the randomness up to maximum? Let's go. So the first thing is nothing changes about the prediction. The prediction is still that they'll lose four and I lose one. So you're making your decisions based on that. You're, you're making your decisions based on, you know, your unit's effectiveness against the enemy unit and all kinds of other factors. The predictor is telling you what the average result should be. So, your whether you have maximum randomness or no randomness, your decision making doesn't change at all. Because the predictor is going to show you the exact same result either way. Where your decision making might change is to do with artillery uh, and aircraft, units that fire and don't expect to be fired back on. But I will explain that in a minute. But let's just see what happens with maximum randomness. So let's go in. Okay, we got the exact same result as um, uh, as without randomness, but let's just restart. It is random, so we actually took one less suppression there, so that was actually a slightly better result. Okay, move a couple of units, let's go, same attack. Alright, this time we got mullered. Instead of doing four damage, we did two, and we took two in return. So that's RNG for you. And if I restart the scenario again, it's going to be different again. And it, it can go, obviously, 100% in either direction, because that's what we set it to. Of the base. So the best possible result is six casualties to them and half a casualty to me, which might not be a casualty at all. That's the best result. And the worst result is the one that we just saw, where I only deal two casualties and take two. I just got the worst result again. I think I actually moved these these units in the exact same way though, so that was kind of stupid of me. It's uh, RNG is seeded, so it, in order to change the randomness, you have to make some different moves.
All right. This time I murdered them. I got the best result possible, which was like seven kills, and I took none in return. And this is where RNG... I hate RNG, because there's just so many ways to exploit it. You can save scum until you get the result you wanted with, with uh, random RNG. Um, and most people know how to do that, how to save scum around until they get the results they want with RNG. But let's say you're like me, and you just play Iron Man all the time. Okay, so, how does how does having a big massive RNG help the attacker if you're Iron Manning and you're not going to save scum? Well, allow me to explain. So let's restart the scenario. And I'll explain how massive RNG can actually really help you. Okay, so, there's infantry in this city, okay? We could scout that if we're, if we're Iron Manning. Let's say we scout that. Alright, so there's the infantry. So, the next and most obvious step is to drop the artillery on him. Alright, we got five suppressions. That's better than expected. Let's go with, I don't know, this plane, for example. Or maybe this plane. Or maybe this artillery. You know, whatever. Let's see what RNG grants us here. Three. I think the expectation was one. So that's... So both of these have done more than expected. And this unit is now pretty heavily suppressed. Now the point is, with big RNG, if our attacks go well, or you know, say I have three massive artillery pieces here and three enemy cities to shoot at, if the attack goes well, then we engage. The, the infantry is suppressed, we can go in and destroy it. But what if RNG doesn't favour us? What if RNG goes the other way? Man, we actually got even better. We got a good roll there as well. One kill and one suppression. That was better than predicted. So all of this has actually gone better than predicted. So, if that happens, great. You press the attack. You press the attack you take less casualties and you clean out the enemy more easily because you got good rolls. Now that may seem obvious, but what happens if you get bad rolls? Well, it's simple. You just don't attack. You are the player on the attack in in this game more or less all of the time. So if you pull up to a city and you bombard it and you get great high rolls, fantastic. Now's your turn to attack. If you get bad rolls, you just don't attack. You just don't attack on that turn. You just pass one turn and you attack the next turn. Now obviously it can get a bit tight if the turn limit is tight, but in most cases the turn limit is not tight. And you're not always going to roll badly on every attack. You might have three, two or three attacks going simultaneously at different locations. So the one where the RNG has gone really well you press the attack there. You crush that. You crush that point because your artillery strikes have gone high RNG. You can get in there and do massive damage. So you do that and you concentrate your aircraft there to support the bit where it's gone correct, where it's gone well, where you've got the big rolls. And then if another attack, you know, that's going on at the same time, the RNG on your artillery and strat bomber or whatever, if you if you're using that as well, goes poorly. You just don't attack on that turn. You just wait them out for a turn. They're not going anywhere. They're defending the city. They're not going to move. So you just don't attack on that turn. And then next turn you attack and hope that the RNG is better or at least average. And in that way, a good player can exploit a wide band of RNG and do, do much better in the game. A, a wide band of RNG helps the attacker because the attacker usually has time, at least some time, to make a few attempts. And also, you often have a lot of units in which you are not expecting return fire. So with aircraft, you're not expecting return fire. So if the attack goes well... Okay, it didn't go well. I should have gotten two kills and I only got one. So, you know, in theory, if this was infantry in a city, I just, I'm just like, okay, I won't attack this turn. I'll attack next turn. 
I'll move my guys over here or whatever or push on to another objective. But if it goes well, then I press my attack. And that's the thing about RNG is a good player can manipulate it and thus do very well. So, I mean, because of how well my attack rolls went on this, I can probably just kill this guy without actually taking any losses. Which is huge. I took one loss. Now, I can tell you for free that with low RNG, you cannot pick that guy out of that city with just one casualty. That is not going to happen. But with high RNG, we did it. But obviously, we got a bad roll against these cavalry, which you'd normally engage with your tanks. I mean, you can still go for it, of course. Nothing's stopping you from going for it. If you feel like it doesn't matter so much that you didn't do as well as expected. That's a decision that you can make. Oh god, that was such a high roll. That was eight. That's disgusting. So you can see here that, our, that you know, the high RNG has allowed me... Oh god, that was another high roll. The RNG, in this case, has actually allowed me to do vastly more damage with less losses than I did in my first campaign with low RNG with just results as expected. So, yeah, there you go. I don't like RNG. I think you can exploit it too easily. I think it's abusable. Um, if, you know, you're not being recorded like me and you're just playing on your own, you can save scum to re-roll RNG as well. There is a lot you can do with high RNG. Um, with low RNG, there's, you know, if you haven't got a good strategy, a good plan, that's actually going to win no matter what, then then you're not going to win, right? It's, it's going to go as your strategy dictates. It's not going to be any better or any worse than your tactical ability. So, anyway, as always, RNG is like Marmite. If you like huge RNG, then fine. But I hate the idea that because you don't have massive RNG in your game, you are you are somehow a worse player. That makes absolutely no sense to me. You are actually probably a better player for playing without RNG. Because if you lose, it's your own fault. You can't blame RNG for your loss. But anyway, that's how RNG works in Panzer Corps 2. Thankfully, the developers saw the wisdom in giving us the choice to change it. Uh as much or as little as we like and um, and I was happy to change it down because I don't like it and I have given you all my reasons why I don't like it but anyway um, I just made this video because I just wanted to show it just to test it and to make my point because uh, this one person on the Steam forums I'll, I'll drop a link in the description to the thread um, Really, like, properly hostile guy, but he just doesn't actually understand how the RNG works, and, uh... <laughs> you know, it's like... I told him how to test it, and he didn't even he didn't even go into the game and try and actually test it. That's, that's what bugs me. Um, so yeah, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. It was more of a rant than anything else, but I do feel quite strongly about RNG, so there we go. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see you guys next time.